it's physically broken i'm not sure if we can see it here on the camera uh, i'll try to show you now you can see here that those pins are kind of messed up there they look nice on the top side pretty messy on the on the bottom side so just need to replace the charging charging port and it should be fine back in business so remove the joy cons and I want to cover the screen with with this protective tape so I wouldn't scratch it Four more screws and and the back will come off. So micro SD card reader, just removing one screw and disconnect it. So, we are inside, looks very nice, never been taken apart, never been repaired, so disconnect the battery, and just start disconnecting all the cables. left and right joy-con sliders and the backlight for the display two antenna cables touch screen cable and removing the heatsink that's the part I hate the most and this one while taking apart so there's this foam sticker and uh, haven't yet found a good method to remove them nicely sometimes they come up quite easily like this one and sometimes they they rip apart so ah, this one was nice so not too bad Okay, so you see uh, the amount of paste 
I'm going to put a lot of thermal paste back here. So don't tell me that it's too much. Look at how much the Nintendo factory themselves applied here. So I'm not going to be too shy on that one too. Just removing the old paste. game cartridge reader I like to remove the fan too it's easier to, to take the board out then and the cable for the power button screws Connecting the display cable and the board comes off. That's how it looks. So uh, in many cases, when the charging port gets broken, this chip might, al might also fail and uh, well, first replace this one and hopefully we, will, we won't need to replace this one too, but uh, you never know. Just move to another workbench. So, I don't use any holder for the board, I just put it on this two pieces of cardboard. Well, one piece is enough, but I like to kind of lift it a little bit, so that's why I use two of them. And I take the heat gun. Just adding some weight.
go. I just need to remove the old leftovers of uh, solder and apply some new lower temperature one. So it's nice and clean, you can see through the holes, that's what I want. And I'm gonna apply some lower temperature solder here to those to those contacts but uh, I'll leave the holes with no solder for now I'm just making it tiny little bumps there the new port too. I'll just add a little bit of solder here to that center row of row of contacts because just want to make sure that they will get soldered and wouldn't have any cold joints so I just need a, li a little bit extra extra solder on those. in and back to the heat gun
seems to be okay. I'll just double check under the microscope. Uh, no, not really. Or, hmm. Sure, if it's there yet, I'll just give it another go. Okay, now it is soldered, but I uh, just need to straighten it out a little. wait a few seconds to allow it to cool down okay and so the main main legs uh, I'll just solder them manually okay. easier when the board is still hot scope
just add a little bit of solder to that outside row of contacts. Just looks a little bit too thin. And a quick cleanup. Cool. Going back to another bench and I'll try to assemble and test it. Still cleaning up after myself. So, throw the board back in. I'm not gonna connect everything. Uh, just because we might still need to replace this chip, so I just want to make sure that it's it's alive. I'll just quickly plug it in and see what's happening there. So I use this energy meter thing to see what's actually happening on the charging port, on the charger, so I... Let me find the charger. So... 
so okay okay so what we got is two watts and we have charging symbol but uh, should take a little bit more just let's give it a minute or so should pick up which I would like to see you know 10 15 watts charging but it could be that if the battery is very flat the charge is lower I'll just grab, I'll just grab a multimeter and see what's what's actually going on on the battery is charging slowly it's picking up now 3.1 and we have 3.7 watts on the on the power meter So it's charging faster now and should should get better. Okay, I'll just clean the thermal paste in the meantime. Add some alcohol. Two. You'll probably need like three point six or three point seven to for the for the console to start up. So I'm not sure. Should I should I assemble it fully now, or or should I leave it for a few minutes to? make sure that it's powering on <laughs> now I'll just put it back to together and and I'm pretty sure it will be fine so plugging all the things back in speaker cables antennas joycon rails
rausfallen. Nice and clean. the game cartridge reader connecting the touchscreen connector and some screws So we'll add some thermal paste, I'm not gonna be greedy, there we go, Just press it down and kind of move it around a little to make sure that all the excess amount of paste just comes out to the sides and then I screw it down. So we have this huge blob of thermal paste and I'll probably just remove it from here. Oh, sure. And I will add another huge blob of paste. There you go, so reconnecting the battery, checking if everything's there, all the screws, all the cables connected, and just putting this back plate on. memory card reader cool the back cover And the last few screws.
Okay, and the last three screws are non-magnetic, so it's hard to pick them up on, on the screwdriver. I'm not sure why they made it this way. But at least it makes it easier to remember which which screws go where, because we have a few screws, a few black screws inside, very similar size, so we can tell them apart at least. Magnetic ones are inside and non-magnetic ones are outside. And that's pretty much it. I'll leave it charging and it should be fine. And if it isn't fine, then we'll need to replace that another chip. And if we do need to replace it, I'll go live again and replace it on live. So. But uh, should be okay. Then peel this one off now. So, thanks for watching and see you next time.